This is the H610. It's the latest drawing tablet from Huion, and today we are checking it out. On the surface, the HS610 doesn't look like anything special, but that is so, so wrong. Yeah, you use the included USB cable to plug it into either a Windows or a Mac computer. Yeah, you draw on the surface of the tablet and your lines show up on the screen in front of you. Yeah, there's pressure sensitivity, about 8,000 levels of it. Yeah, it even has tilt functionality now. But the cool thing about this tablet is that it's the first tablet that I know of that allows you to draw directly on an Android tablet or phone. And maybe even a Chromebook or two. We'll see more on that in a minute. Why is drawing on Android so special? Anyhow, I think for a lot of you, especially those of you who subscribe, who are regulars here, you already have a laptop. Maybe you already have a drawing tablet or an iPad or something you already enjoy drawing on. But I think for a lot of people who are just jumping into this as a hobby, illustration, art, that sort of thing, and want to draw digitally, there is a price to pay for that. Oftentimes the price of that is a new laptop or something like that, but most people, they have a smartphone. And so having a tablet that allows you to directly connect it to a smartphone and actually draw on that smartphone, this is a pretty cool thing. So let's take a look at this thing. Let's dive in and see what it's like to draw with. Also, if you're interested in a drawing tablet like this, but you wanna see what some of the other ones out there are like, I've compiled all the reviews I've done over on my website. I'll put a link down in the description for that. I mentioned the pressure on the pen, about 8,192 levels of pressure. It also supports 60 degrees of brush tilt now. And unlike Huion's older pens, this one is 100% battery free. That means no recharging or batteries needed. The tablet itself has a live area of 10 inches by 6.25 inches. That's the space on the display that you can draw on. I would consider this a medium sized tablet. It comes down to preference which one you like. To me, this is the Goldilocks size. Too small and it feels cramped. Too big and the porridge is gonna burn your tongue. I don't remember how Goldilocks ends. My point is, is this is the size that I like to draw on. It's really light and thin, but it's also sturdy. It's made of plastic and it's the type of plastic you would expect in a fairly inexpensive device like this. It loves fingerprints. Some people collect action figures, some people collect stamps, this collects fingerprints. The build is good enough. It doesn't feel premium, but it doesn't feel bad either. I knew that after drawing three lines on it, I would never be able to get it fully clean again. It has these little crevices around the side and around the buttons, and they're about as thick as your fingernail, and dust loves to collect in there. And my camera really likes to pick up dust, but you're probably not buying this to take pictures of it. We do have some customizable shortcut keys. You can see those here along the side. You can set those to any keyboard shortcut your little heart desires. There's also the zoom wheel. You can scroll in, resize your brushes, do that sort of thing with it. It's calibrated pretty well too. Sometimes these scroll wheels move way too fast or way too slow, so you zoom in way too far, or it takes forever just to change your brush size, but this one feels good. What are these numbers? Yelled Grandpa Bear as he guzzled his porridge. Those are soft keys. What the heck is a soft key? Screamed Grandpa Bear while destroying a rocking chair. They're tappable shortcut keys, and they're customizable just like the other shortcut keys. I went in and I set them to a whole bunch of different shortcuts just to see how they work. They're okay. You just tap them to switch between tools. It's fine. They probably get in the way. I was wondering that too. Am I ever going to accidentally tap them in my time using it? They haven't, even though they butt up right against the live area of the tablet. I think mostly because my pen never actually reaches that high and my wrists never go that high either. So there really isn't too many opportunities for them to accidentally toggle settings on and off. The texture of the tablet itself feels good to draw on. It's a little bit textured. It has some tooth there, so it gives it a very natural drawing feel. You might might be wondering, won't that texture wear out my pen nibs? Well, yeah, it will over time, especially if you're a heavy drawer. But fortunately, Huion's looking out for you. You've got extra nibs in the little pen holder. There's some along the bottom, and there's also a little baggie that has some extra in the box. The pen's line quality feels just about right. The pressure comes out at a good rate. It holds that pressure well around curves, drawing slow angled lines. I get a tiny bit of wave with those, but nothing serious. But overall, I think the pen feels good. For most folks, it's going to be more than adequate. So using this on Windows or on a Mac, 
This is exactly what I expected. But what about Android? This is the new feature. Let's talk about that. In the box, you're gonna find two different kinds of USB adapters. One is a USB-C adapter, and the other one is a micro USB adapter. This is gonna cover most of the phones that have been released in recent years. You do need to have Android 6.0 or later running on your phone or tablet. That's Marshmallow for those of you who prefer to measure your OS's by sugar content. When you plug it into your phone, it automatically switches to Android Android mode. You don't need any extra software, you don't need any apps, it just works. The one catch is, is you can only draw on a portion of the tablet and have that portion of it show up on the screen. Since there is no software to install or anything like that, there are no settings to fiddle with it. You can't go in and change your shortcut keys, but out of the box, I was pretty impressed with how well this works. Playing around with this tablet in Sketchbook is legit. Pressure is working and it's working well. Your lines look good, in fact, they, they might might look better than they do on Windows. When I plugged it into my Android tablet, which is a Samsung Galaxy Tab A with S Pen, I found some quirks. When I was using the drawing programs, for the most part, it, it worked pretty well. From time to time, it did seem to conflict with Samsung's own software that it has installed on there, specifically the software that's designed to take advantage of the S Pen. When I plugged this into my busted up Pixel 3, it worked really well. I didn't come into any conflicts, found the lines to be smooth, and I was genuinely surprised at how nice it was to draw with. Now, if you're looking to use something like this only on an Android phone, something I would take a look at is another tablet that Huion released just recently. It is called the HS64. It's a cheaper, smaller version of this tablet without as many bells and whistles. But since those bells and whistles don't work on Android, if that's all you plan on using it for, it might be worth it going with the lower price tablet. All right, now I was wondering, since this works on Android, would it work on a Chromebook? Chromebooks can run Android apps. I wonder if I have a Chromebook sitting around here somewhere. Hello, Chromebook, my old friend. I've come, come to talk, talk to you again. Because our vision softly sleep. Are we not are we not singing anymore? I was really hoping that I'd never have to use the Pixel Slate again. First of all, disclaimer. Huion never said that this would work on a Chromebook. I'm just curious. We have friends with kids and in school, a lot of times these kids will get these Chromebooks to, to work with and do papers on and, and surf the internet, I guess. And the parents asked me, hey, my kid's interested in art. What kind of drawing hardware can I get for this Chromebook that they already have that they can use and learn with? And my answer is usually, no, those Chromebooks just aren't meant for that. Anyway, I plug this thing in and it, kind of works. Again, Sketchbook is pretty decent, and I get some good lines here. There is one major caveat. There is no pressure sensitivity here. If you need pressure sensitivity, I don't think this is gonna work for you. That is a big feature of a drawing tablet. But if you're cool with not having any pressure and all you want is something that's accurate on a Chromebook, this works. I should point out that some of the apps crashed when I was using them while I was drawing on this tablet, but I should also point out that some of the apps crashed when I was just using the Pixel Slate normally when I reviewed it a couple months ago. So overall, what we have here with the HS610 is a pretty good drawing tablet if you want to use it that way, but I think the Android features are really fascinating and it's a cool new area Huion is exploring. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. That is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in a couple of days.